Welcome back. Another edition of the Down and Back Cornhole Podcast. And for the first time on the new rebranded title, we have the person who's been on the show the most, Mr. Trey Ryder. Trey, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, thanks for having me back again. I don't, well, I don't know. What, I think I've lost count now, but I appreciate you having well, me back. I, you know, it's, it's, we've both been kind of busy here. It's the first time we've had a chance to talk since Niagara, since that, I'm going to say an amazing weekend. I forgot how much sleep you lose at a big tournament weekend. But <laughs> it was all worth it. And but but my thing, I don't know if you get this. Why does everyone want to get a picture with you first thing in the morning after you've not been to bed since two o'clock? <laughs> yeah, that's why right. you got to come in prepared. That's that's oh. that's coming in prepared from from the get go. You got to have your game face on when you walk in the building. Well, you know what? It, it was it was a fun weekend, but uh, I think. Uh, we got we got to talk about the elephant in the room. We I put it up there earlier this week. The game. Uh, <laughs> uh, we we had the special guest commentator, and he he made sure everyone knew what the score was. In that, <laughs> I, I think I had one good round. You didn't you didn't give me much, Doug. I needed a little I needed a little battle back, right? But I had I had I think I had one good round, right? I think I threw. Well, you had the you had, you had the four bag drag. And that I think I think that, everyone in the whole, I think everyone in Niagara knew when Donnie called that yes. that you had that four yes. bag drag. But you know, uh, for me, I was ready to play on the Sunday, but you had to play right away, and I was like, oh, I had to like really rush, and so I, that's that's my excuse. But uh, <laughs> you, hey, I'm the king of excuses when it comes to playing cornhole. So you take as many excuses as you want. I will let you have them because I need them too. Well, it was and and well, for me. That's the thing is we always talk about it, you have to have the, the proper bags for the for the uh, the board conditions, right? And I had been watching down that live feed court where I was commentating the way the board played there. I brought a faster bag, and it was a totally different board than what was at the other end of the room. Yeah. So yeah, you know. <clears throat> yeah I keep it easy on myself. I always just say, "Give me the slowest bag you got." <laughs> and let me throw it as hard as I can. That's that. That's that's my that's my zone. That's where my sweet spot is. Mm -hmm. Well, so you you did you did take me down twenty twenty one three, but then I get all these messages. You got to check out the borderline show. You got to check out the border. Then and then you you really give it to me there. <laughs> yeah, I like I like. You, Everybody knows me. If, if you don't know this about me, Doug, when it comes to cornhole playing, I may not be that good, but I can talk smack with, with the best of them. You don't want to – especially – I mean, you're, you're lucky I didn't have a, a couple couple cocktails because you get a couple cocktails in me and you get me talking smack, you, you, you forget it. I mean, you can ask some of the pros, some of these national weekends or some of these open weekends when it's – when it gets late in the night, the broadcast is over. We're still playing. I have a couple cocktails. You better, you, you forget it. You, I, <laughs> I get in their heads. That's the only way I can beat them. I just gotta, I gotta mentally tear them down with my smack talk. Well, I think, I think the other thing that people don't really know about that whole series as well was that we usually have the loser has to retire. I think that was the winner was retiring, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, look, I'll, I'll, I'll go out on top. That's easy. Right. You're not, you don't have to tell me twice. I will gladly hang the bags up. There's no need for me to keep trying to do this. Cause uh, it, it, it doesn't work. It doesn't work often. Well, you know what? It was, it was a fun thing. I, I we've kind of been talking about it all your, the shows that you've been on before we got the chance to play in Rock Hill, then in Niagara. And I think it, it was just, it was just a fun thing just to do. I think it was just, it was all in fun. We kind of went back a bit, but it was, you know, still all in fun. Yeah, no, I, it, was, it was good. It's it's always it's always in good fun. I mean, <clears throat> you you and, you and I both know how to have some fun with with stuff like that. So I think it yep. was maybe maybe one day we'll bring back the series, or maybe we'll have to do a double series sometimes. Maybe we'll have to we'll have to get some other podcasters and do some type of series. Well, and I, th I think if if anyone wants to be, you said it best right at the end. We're both not that good. <laughs> no, we're not good. We are not good. Uh, I always like to say I, my technique looks like it should go in the hole, but it just doesn't. That's that's me to a T. So we go from that, but the rest of the weekend was probably one of the best weekends we've had here in Canada. 
since we started Cornhole because it was just nonstop. So many, so many great stories of new players that came out of that whole, that whole weekend. And it was just a fantastic weekend. Yeah, no, I thought it was a, it was a major success. First international event, and I think the timing of us talking about that now, kind of looking back on it, is great because this weekend we're going out, out. You know, half the team is is in the Netherlands right now, putting on the uh, first ever ACL Europe Open. So you know, it's we get a little bit of the same of what we experienced in Canada, but some added layers of of language barriers. Mm-hmm. It's always going to be fun fun to experience. But I think no, I think the ACL Europe Open is going to be is going to be great. I'm excited to kind of see how it all, uh, how it all comes together. But um, looking back on, on the Niagara Falls event, I mean, I really think it was, it gave everybody just a taste. I always tell people, you, you don't even know what it's, you, you don't really fully grasp it until you go to one of these big events, right? Mm-hmm. Because you don't get to see it all in its well-oiled machine, right? And so when you get out there and it's the, it's the pro boards, it's the, the tablets, it's the text messaging, it's the broadcast court set up, it's the, you know, churning through events and getting to know, getting to see hundreds of people instead of tens of people that you see yeah. at your, your local blind draw. Just, it's just a different experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I really think that, um, you know, it was, it was an incredible first event. And what's great is it's, there's, there's plenty more to come, right? It's just, yeah. it's just the start. Um, there's going to be more and more events, more building up, you know, with, with the Olympics on our mind, it's about growing Canada. It's about growing other countries. I mean, there's a lot of different things that we want to accomplish in order to, to, to explode this sport even more. But, um, you know, I think we'll always look back at that Niagara event and say to ourselves, that was kind of the, that was the step, that was the step ladder, right? That was the first, first major event outside of the United States. And, you know, Niagara is always going to have that bragging right. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and the thing was for me was that I, when I kept telling the newer players, <clears throat> um, was that you, you can go to your event, your local, your local tournament, whatever. You got your full day of throwing. You start to feel sore from there. Now move that into three days, and we had a lot of people I talked to afterwards that were like, two weeks after, like my arm still feels like I'm going to fall off because. <laughs> Because you're you're playing your, your regular tournaments and you just you're, you're just going playing cash games or 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 the the sit and goes on other on other boards, it's just you know you're you're there eight in the morning till eleven at night and then let's do it the next day. Yeah, I mean, I always you know I always joke around and and part of it's joking and part of it's serious, but cornhole at the next level requires a level of stamina. Right. Am I saying you need to have the ability to run a marathon? No, I'm not saying that. But there is an element of fatigue. I mean, when any time you do anything 10,000 times, you know, a thousand times in a day, you're going to get a little bit mentally and physically fatigued. Right. So that's the thing. Another great thing about these big events is it gives people the opportunity to really experience what a pro event is like. Right. And even though they may not be pro caliber, they they get the feel of wow this is a grind like i mean you you gain almost a respect for some of these top level pros that man you really have to grind away at this if you're gonna if you're gonna kind of make that next level jump and um you gain an appreciation for some of these top pros that can do it weekend in weekend out well i think that's where we see that so many of the top pros are former athletes themselves because they've they've been able to they know that grind of, of whatever sport they were in, whether it be Christine Papke being the marathon runner, Ryan Smith with his with his two a days in, in college football. They all they've all kind of been there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, um, I think that's what's great. I mean, cornhole becomes you know I think it, it in a way it kind of replaces the church league softball type of thing, right? How many yep. people you know they go and play church league softball because they blew out their knee playing football? They still got a competitive edge. Well, you know, cornhole allows people to do that. Um, and, and, and with limited range of motion and, you know, limited physical exertion, it becomes, uh, becomes something that anybody can do, um, but still has a physical side to it. And although the physical side may be minimal on the, ex- at least being strenuous, it's still a physical motion of, of throwing a one pound bag 27 feet 
time and time again that that people have to uh, fight through and you know it, it becomes an issue of stamina for sure yeah and you know and and just seeing some of the performances that you know the people being able, being able to see the, the ACL pros that came up to play and being able to see because and not just hearing me talk about how you know approachable you are to how approachable Stacy is to to Jimmy McGuff and Christine Papke Jordan Power just seeing those people on a on a TV or whatever and being like they're just regular guys which is what I've been saying all along but it's you know it's you're all still approachable yeah <clears throat> and I think it was great now kind of looking back on it I mean. Now, knowing what we know now, I think it was great to have Jordan Power out there. Now he's a doubles world champion, right? And yep. so those those people can fully grasp that, wow, I saw that guy play live in person. I saw him win everything. Yep. I saw him being a dominant, dominant player. And that's the player that went on to win a doubles world championship. And on the, on the flip side, I think he lost a game or two, maybe in doubles on the team event or something like that. So I kind of, I bring that back to say, hey, look, you know, the best player, best doubles team in the world, a member of the best doubles team in the world, just won a world championship. He lost up there, right? Yeah. And, and, and and I think that also gives people motivation to continue to want to grind at it and get better because they say, okay, that player just won a world championship, but he, he came into, and although he won in my backyard, he came into my backyard and somebody beat him, yeah. right? Somebody challenged him. And, and really went toe to toe with him. And I think that's really cool. And I think that, that, that continues to build motivation and confidence for a lot of these international players. Well, and for me, I can say that I, I, I survived one of his chirps because he, uh, I guess we were a little too pro Canadian in one of the team's events and he had made a comment as he was throwing a bag. So I, I survived. So anybody should be able to, uh, to survive a, a comment. Well, yeah. Well, well I mean, how, how, you know, how cool that feel. He's chirped you and now he chirped Mark Richards, right? Yeah. As soon as yeah. he threw the bag. I mean, yeah. uh, <laughs> that's his style, right? As soon yeah. as that bag leaves his hand, that bag doesn't even land on the other side before he starts chirping. Yeah. And it's just, you know, and to be able to see that the way he is on the board to being like a total 180 away from the boards, how he's that shy, really soft-spoken guy. And it's just like, you know, where he can turn it on. Yeah, he's a gamer. I mean, that's yeah. how many people you know are like that, right? They're nice and quiet. They have a soft side to them, but you put them in an athletic competition. You put them in something that gets the competitive juices flowing. Forget it. I mean, he's he's a gamer. That's that's what yeah. he is. Um, and I personally love it. I think it's great for the sport to bring some energy. Um, not everybody's going to like it, but not everybody's yeah. supposed to like it, right? Exactly. And that's and that's and that's great. So um, yeah, no, I think it's uh, I think it's I think it's great for the sport, and it was really cool just to have Jordan in Niagara. And I think the other the other highlight, the biggest highlight for me is what is what you did for me is is allowing me to come on to uh, to, to ESPN three with you and, and do some talking. I'm glad I didn't mess up to start too much. I only did it once. But, uh, <laughs> hey, two just, takes is not bad, my friend. Two well, takes is not bad. Like I said, the first show was 25 takes for for doing this here, but it's you know <laughs> that is still giving us stuff with the amount of shots and the amount of stuff that happened at that at that event. You know that for for a first televised event in Canada, there was there was some big play from from, from some players. Yeah, no, it was a ton of ton of highlights. We had plenty of things to clip from that to to put out on social media, which was really cool. Um, I thought it was, I thought I couldn't have gone better um, on that front. And you know, it's uh, I it was cool to sit sit beside you. And um, you know, the hardest thing I could even tell, you know, the hardest thing is is you find yourself sometimes in the moment of just trying to appreciate what you're watching. And then yep. you're realizing, Oh, I got to talk about this. Right. Okay. I mean, it's, it's, that's, that's, that's always cool is to try to, you're trying to take a minute to just appreciate what you're seeing, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, it was really cool. And I, and I have to say, even though I did ask him after the, after the game there, Jamie Cowan, I've had to watch it about another 50 times since I've uh, gone back up to the, uh, the new JC Cornhole compound up there. He's just, Hey, you want to watch this? I I lived it. So <laughs> yeah, he's he gets those bragging rights, right? He oh. gets them all year long. And I, and I know I, I I have to talk to Stacy as well because I think Stacy's even called him the HHR, the, the human highlight reel. Because every time he gets on an ESPN broadcast, he makes that shot that becomes the the shot of the match, which is just 
is head to the it's it's good. It's all in good fun. Oh, it, and it, it is, and that's and that's kind of what you know. He's he's really started to take a lot of fun out of it because there's some people that have started to take it more serious up here, and kind of the fun has kind of come off a bit. And uh, we're we're trying to bring that back, but it's still, I think it's all good. But then, leading into last week, we had the our biggest Canadian contingent down at a, at an ACL World Finals, finally making it an actual World Finals without us being there. But uh, what a week that was! Yeah, yeah, I just you know include the USA Cornell National Championship is ten days. It was a grind. It was exhausting. Um, but I thought it was, you know, definitely not perfect. But at the same time, I look back on it and there was just a ton of things that we did really, really well. And we grew a lot um, and learned a lot about a lot of different things. And, you know, between what we did to make it a really special event to, you know, the Super Bowl and, and ESPN 8, the Ocho Day aspect. That was a really, really cool event that we were able to kind of put together and work with all these different celebrities to crowning the world champions. I mean, just just a ton of stuff that was just really, really cool, really special. Um, I, 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 you know, had some time to really think about it and was just, you know, just blown away about what our team was able to accomplish. And, and overall, I just thought it was a great n- another stepping stone um, we're, we're, we've kind of digested now and had a chance to really dive in and see what we did well, see what we didn't do well, see what we can improve upon. And uh, you know, it just, it just makes it makes me excited for, for next year and the year after that and, and the years to come with everything that we're building. Well, and like, like you and I kind of talked a bit off here is that with how many games were played in those 10 days and we're only talking about, five things that happened, maybe five things, you're really grasping at straws if you're really going after that stuff because it's just, you know what, so many other things could have went wrong in those other thousands of games. It's, it's going to happen. Yeah, drama makes the headlines, right? We're, we're exactly. used to that, um, you know, and, and you know, uh, for what it's worth, there's, there's plenty of things that we can learn from those different uh, drama headlines. So, um, you know, those are the part of things that we want to grow and get better at. But, you know, I try not to – I definitely uh, – we definitely know not to let the, you know, a few, you know, things that we can improve upon overshadow with everything that we could – that we accomplished. I mean – with the staff that we had to do what we did was, was really special. Um, and I think you ask, you ask almost every player that was in that building, you know, they're going to say it was one of the best experiences they've ever had. And that's, that's what speaks, that's what speaks volumes to us. Well, I know. And I know that for, for some of our Canadian players that went down there being their first time at a big ACL event like that, they were all in Niagara, then going down to see that there. I know, I know a couple of people like, like, Corey Ewart went down there, played in a couple things, did really well in his events, came back home, and, and him being a former national champion curler up here, he was like, that that event was like second to none. He comes back, and within four days, him and his partner James Forbes, their league has now become an ACL league. Nice. Right? So he's like, you know, they were, they were, they were like, we're just going to stay kind of an independent thing and just kind of do our own thing, but now they're like, we want to be a part of this. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's great. great. And, you know, and, and we've had, I think in the last week, we've had like four leagues kind of come on. And it's just, it's, it's, for me, that's just been great for just our expansion up here. Yeah. No, that's, and that's great to hear. And that's what we want. That's what we want to do is we want to put together an incredible experience that when people leave there, they go, man, that was incredible. That's what I want to be a part of. You know, that's what we, that's what we, we, we pride ourselves in ourselves in. So um, that's, that's, that's amazing to hear. And, and I hope, um, you know, I hope there's a lot of people that left that saying, man, I just can't wait to see how it keeps continuing to grow. Well, exactly. And like, I was talking to one of the guys who's, who's another league that's come on and, and his quote to me, I was like, I, I've got to use this on the show. He was just like, the ACL is the obvious dominant league. It's marketing and promotion can't be beat at this time. And the growth the ACL is seeing is so big that they just had to be a part of it. Right. Which is, you know, kind of what we've been kind of slowly. Everyone wanted to have the ACL. has got to come in big the way they are in the States up here. Right away. And I've all, and I've kind of said, you know, after talking with you and, and with, with Todd, this is going to be a slow process. It's not going to be like just a, here it is. 
it's, you know, it, it wasn't like that with you guys in the States. It's going to be a slow process. And I think we're probably ahead of where we thought we would be at this point last year. Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, I remember conversations with you a year ago that were, that were almost frustration. And I kept, yep. you know, I kept, I, I, I tell everybody, look, you got it. You got to give us a chance to, you're not going to sway people by the things that you say. It's not going to happen. Yep. Right. I mean, I've seen that time and time again, people, people, people get tired of me talking. Right. So uh, it, the things that you say are not going to influence people. It's the things that you do. Um, it's the events that you put on. It's the content that you put out. It's mm. the things that, that make your sport want to be something that you either want to watch, become a fan of, or be a part of as a player. And so we knew that it would just take an opportunity. And we're going to see the same thing in Europe, right? Yep. You know, we're, we're prepared for the same thing. Europe is kind of like where Canada was. There's a select great group of people out there in Europe that are like, man, this is great. I love the vision. This is really cool what we put together. And then there's others that, that say, you know, I don't really get it. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to even jump on board of this. But the idea is if we can go out there and we can, you know, put on a really special event that everybody goes, wow, that was super special, super impressive. Then all of a sudden you have, you have a backing of, of an entire continent, right? And you start building that. And then you have more people wanting to come on and build from there. I mean, that's the key is you can't, you can't just tell people how to do things, right? Mm -hmm. You got to go out there and you just got to do it. And you got to, you got to, you got to put on a badass event that gets people excited about cornhole. And, you know, I'm excited to see what happens in Europe this weekend because of that, because I think it could be a really great stepping stone for everything else um, and in continued growth across different continents. Well, like I even said, like, you know, off the opening of the ESPN broadcast here, I was like, everyone was asking me when a big, big event was going to come to Canada. That time was now. And then everyone just, there's, I, I, I don't, I don't go to a league night or, or, or a tournament where someone doesn't talk about, I you remember when this happened in Niagara. Yeah. Right. It's just, you know, it's, you know, and they have so many of the other American players come up and just kind of like even non pro American players, right. That come up and just were kind of like, I don't want to say shocked at how good some of our players were, but just kind of shocked at, at just the size of the event. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it, it is, it's an eye opening experience for a lot of people. Um, mm -hmm. and, it, and it does shock them sometimes, you know, it, <laughs> it's, it, it, I don't think people fully grasp. I mean, I can't imagine if you had never been to an open and you went to the world championships for the first time. I mean, yeah. I can't imagine what that experience was like. Right. And it just being mind blowing. At least if you've been to an open, you kind of see how things progress, but man, yeah, it's, it, it, it can, it can reshape your perspective and create a new perspective for you. Um, with one that's got a lot of uh, positive outlook. Well, like I, I always say, I'm still in shock still from 2018. Yeah, 2018 down in Cherokee. I'm just walking into that where the where there was the ballroom and the other and the other conference center where you know that was just huge compared to me being coming from like four sets of boards. To, yeah, to that, that was that was 40 total sets of boards, and now we just did an event with 128 sets. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. but it's you know, but it's. It's the fun we call cornhole. It's you know, it's yes. it's what we're here for. Yeah, absolutely. No, I I wouldn't I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's been uh, it's crazy what a year it's been. We got three more events for us. That brings us to the end of the really the end of the season, and uh, then we get to build and, and prepare for what we have next season, which is great. Exactly, and and the other thing that really kind of popped out for us this year, and really kind of got more people talking about it, because last year I believe we had, I want to say sixteen people apply to uh, to go into the our pro qualifier tournament that we had at our central at our first central conference tournament back in December and I think we have one coming up now at the top 100 tournament and I want to say I think I may have seen about like 50 or 60 names on the list that are trying for and not just an international pro spot I believe if I'm not mistaken is this conference pro qualifier is for like a full pro on spot. Yeah, I, I'd have to look and see exactly what Todd is putting together, but there will be international pros this season that have permanent pro spots that are not just your 
you're 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 part of the PDC program and developmental program, which is really cool and really special um, because that'll really give an opportunity for <clears throat> these players to, to to compete with the best and to really represent the ACL pro brand and develop that in different countries and make that a reputable brand that becomes something that's really, really just renowned and polished and something that's looked upon and said, wow, that's, that's the best of the best. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to have kind of the first batch of international players taking up a permanent pro spot this coming season. Well, I know. And, 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 that's what I like this year was was being able to see, you know, Dean Lang kind of excel and, and Brandon Brown excel uh, at some of those PDC events where they uh, were able to to make it into the, the the pro bracket. And you know, there was one person may have mentioned on a live feed during the the U.S. cornhole that Canada doesn't really play real cornhole up here, but I think we then showed them, um, especially with a guy who didn't surprise me at all in the in the pro qualifier being uh connor weiss out of out of lanark we we had we kind of messaged back and forth i was like watch out for this guy but he uh i think he's like three or four and oh against dean lang up here before going down there but he uh he really I think he won that. the did he win the director blind blind draw if i'm not he, mistaken he, he won the director blind draw as well and he's just hey he, he, he's one of those guys i call just young and dumb they don't know that they shouldn't be as good as what they are at that young age <laughs> yep yep that's good that's good. You'd, you'd love to be that, right? You don't want right. to be like us that think way too much and then we, we can't hit the broad side of a barn. Well, exactly, yeah. And and that's and that's the other thing about our, our new leagues that are coming on because we, we've got a league in, in Cannington here where they've got a couple of young guys where I've had to play against them. Uh, Gage McMillan and Mason Stewart, I'm calling them our Gore brothers for up here because they're just – they're kids that when you see them at a tournament, they're finding an open board to throw. They're yeah. they're practicing. They're they're getting better. And I've seen them each tournament getting better. And and you know what? They're probably competitive division now. I'm going to say by the end of by even halfway through the season, they're going to be up playing in the advanced division because they're just they're getting better each time I see them. Yeah. No, that's great. I mean, the youth. I mean, obviously, the youth of of the game is is at the forefront right now. And it'll probably be that way at least for the next few years. Um, you know, at some point, you know, as, as the sport evolves, I think, you know, we'll see a little bit more of a, a wide range of people getting into it. But right now the youth have an advantage and that's time. And that's something that they're, they're taking full advantage of. So we're going to continue to see more and more of these young players blossom in the game. And, and it's great and it's awesome when they can hold on to it and continue to ride that momentum. Exactly. I can't – this this season is just I, – I can't wait to get this season started. It's just – you know, I've always been like that, but now it's just – I think I'm going to be stepping back doing a bit more live feed broadcasting because I don't think I can compete anymore with some of those other better players. But it's just – I just can't wait to be able to watch and, and just see how many more new players we can get in with this year. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know I'm, I, I I'm pretty certain you're you're uh, you're number one player you probably haven't found yet in Canada, right? Maybe you have, but you're. I mean, I think there's. I think it's it, and that that should be an exciting and inspiring. Is that you're, you know, you're Mark Richards, you're Jamie Graham, you're whatever that's going to compete at the top level and not just compete right for mm -hmm. a top one hundred spot, but compete for a number one player in the world. You, you haven't met that. You haven't found that person yet. And what's great is you're, you'll find them soon, and that's when that's when the real rivalries will come out, right? Mm -hmm. That's when the Canadian-U.S. rivalry will really ramp up and be exciting because then you have legitimate elite players that can go head-to-head -head and represent their country, and I think that's when it will be really exciting from an international competition perspective. Which is, And that's why I'm so excited to see what's going to happen this weekend in the Netherlands because we've got Dion Kuza who got his spot at the ACL Open in, in, in Niagara. got He was the last Canadian standing. Getting to see him throw in his, I guess, his first big event as, a, as an international pro. And then Bernie Portalesi. Um, I, uh, I, I've got to say, I have to, I, I talked to him. I've got to make something right. ESPN broadcast, I, I said, the guy who wears the hat runs the house. Apparently, he had to stop his wife from running over at me when I said that. It's actually the guy who wears the, guy who wears the hat helps the community out. Is is what is what he is the guy that kind of helps lead the community. So that's 
the, the, the Bernie's family gets mad at me sometimes if I pronounce a name wrong or, or I say something wrong, he's got to calm them down. So it's, you know, you don't want to make any <laughs> of the women in the, in the, in the, the, the P families mad at all. Yeah. So, no, Bernie, I've, Bernie's been great. He's, he's been great to have this season um, as, as a pro player. He's always been excited and, um, you know, he's, he's been great, great to work with and just excited to see him continue to grow with the hat. Yeah. He's, he's, he is quite the passionate guy. So I do have one question for you. It's come from a, the, the reigning international director of the year, not Amber, the other half. Uh, Sean messaged me the other day. He was like, and I don't even know where this question came from, but he asked, where does the name Cornhole come from? How did it get established as the name Cornhole? I was like, I don't know. I'll talk to Trey here this week, but. I'm not even sure yeah. I even know as the, as, the, as the historian of the ACL. Yeah, so um, nobody knows exactly when Cornhole was founded as the name, but the, the idea of it was is that the bags, um, instead of being filled with a plastic resin, bags used to be filled with corn. Yeah. And so players would take a bag full of corn and throw it into a hole, and that's where Cornhole came about. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, the days of corn bags have, have since probably gone away for the most part as corn breaks down a lot easier and, and obviously leaves residual film on your boards and such. And if you leave them out in the rain, they're done for good. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, it just goes back to the, the, the concept of, um, you know, bags used to being filled with corn. So may, maybe I am the guru because that's what I said. I told him that that's it. <laughs> corn, corn the hole, corn hole. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that's it. So just just before we go here, I want to make sure I get the, the sponsors in. I know the ACL helps me out a lot, and and I thank you guys for that there. But uh, but Octane Cornhole, OctaneCornhole.com, discount code CORNDUG will get you 10% off of there. Then head over to, to Jamie's home this week. He's actually not going to any tournaments, so he's able to fill all the orders you want over at JCCornhole.com. I was up to shop the other night. He's ready for more work. Just work him to death. SierraHome.com, Sierra Property Inspections. Talk with Darren in Edmonton, Alberta. And remember, any anything you get him to do, a portion of, of what you pay will go to a children's hospice, in the cancer hospice in, in Edmonton. And then if you need any bags you want, anything that you will see on the ACL website, you can get at CSCCornhole.com, Cornhole Supplies Canada. We'll hook you up with any ACL approved bag. And uh, it's only for Canadians to ship anywhere in Canada here. But you can get all of your, your fire, your local, your BG bags, whatever you need. He uh, Matt's got it there. So just go and check that out. No discount code co code there yet. But I'm I'm working on Matt. So <laughs> we'll see. But uh, so Trey, anything else? Because there anything that we can kind of kind of maybe hint at that might be happening here in the near future? Uh, ask me in a month. <laughs> let me get through, let me get through uh, August here and then we can kind of talk, kinda talk more stuff. Uh, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of things brewing. We're excited for our college tour. College tour is going to be ramping back up here in the fall. Um, but September is going to be a big month for us on planning, just getting everything, you know, getting everything squared away, the lineup of events, everything like that squared away, because, you know, that's going to be, um, you know, it's going to be important to, to, to really lay the foundation for, for that. So um, September will be a big month. Exactly. And just, you know, keep, keep watching here for anything that's going to happen in Canada. I'm not sure if that retirement that I hinted at last week on the show, if that has happened <laughs> yet or, if possible, I heard there may even be a Tom Brady situation happening with this retirement <laughs> of a uh, of a certain Canadian pro, but we'll wait and see just what uh, what's going to be happening with that there. So, thanks again for watching. Make sure you're you're liking it, subscribing, share it because Mr. Ryder is the man of the ACL, and uh, we want to get everything that he said out to uh, out to the masses in Cornhole. Yeah, thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. Exactly. So, as always, watch out for those. Players on gas because they might be like but that guy and uh, and kick your ass. <laughs>